Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. Years ago, Business Insider ran an article on 15 banned Google interview questions. The title caught my attention, and one of the interview questions was a riddle. Perhaps you can see why it was banned. In a fictional country in which people want to have boys, every family continues to have children until they have a boy. If they have a girl, they have another child. If they have a boy, they stop. What is the expected ratio of boys to girls? Not only could the question be banned because of the wording of the question, but you could also imagine the question may have nothing to do with the competency of the applicant. But I do think there's an interesting mathematical question hidden in this problem. So let me rephrase the question. In a fictional country, a king performs an experiment. Every subject is to flip a coin until the coin shows a heads. If the coin shows a tails, they flip again. If the coin shows a heads, they stop. What is the expected percentage of heads in this experiment? So what is your intuition about the problem? When I first heard it, I thought surely there will be many more tails than heads in the experiment. After all, each person is flipping until they get one heads, but many people will be flipping many tails. So surely the number of tails in the experiment will outweigh the number of heads. Because my intuition was wrong, I did the calculation and fell into a common mistake. So let x be a random variable to denote the event. So one possibility is people could just flip a heads on the first try. What is the probability of that event? Let's assume a fair coin, so this happens with a 50% chance. Now the number of flips so far will just be one. Now if a person doesn't get a heads on the first flip, then you might get a head on the second flip. So it would be a tails and then a head. The probability that this will happen will be 0.5 times 0.5, which is 0.5 squared, and this will be two flips total. We might also have two tails and then a heads. This happens with probability 0.5 raised to the power of three, and this will happen for three flips. We could also have three tails and then a heads. This will happen with probability 0.5 to the power of four, and this will be four flips. We could also have four tails with a heads. This will happen with probability 0.5 to the power of five, and this will be five flips. So I thought about truncating the calculation at this point. How many heads are there to flips in this experiment? I thought that we have five different events, so the total number of heads will be five. How many flips are there in total? We have one plus two plus three plus four plus five, which will be a total of 15 flips. So it would seem the number of heads to the total number of flips will be five over 15, which is one third. But this approach is completely and totally wrong. What we haven't taken into account here is the probability of each of these events happening. If we just count the number of heads divided by the total number of flips without taking into account the probability of each event, we have definitely come up with a biased estimator. So this answer is wrong. It actually turns out the correct ratio of heads to total number of flips is 50%. So let me explain why that's the case we need to adjust our calculation by the weight of each event. So let's adjust this table to take into account the probability of each of these events happening. Suppose we have 800 subjects in the kingdom. How many of them will end with one flip that has heads? This will be 800 times 0.5, which will be a total of 400 subjects. Half of the subjects will end the experiment in just one flip because their coin will show heads. Now let's do the same thing for TH. This will happen for 0.5 squared of the subjects, so it'll be 800 times 0.5 squared, which will be 200 people on average. We can then go to the next event. We basically divide the number of subjects we just had by two, so this will be 100 subjects. Then we go to the next event, we divide by two so that we have 50 subjects who end up here. 
And finally, in this event, we divide by 2, so we have 50 over 2, which is 25 subjects. Now let's consider the number of flips in each event. The first event will be one flip, the second event has two flips, and so on. We have three, four, and five flips. We can now count the total number of flips in each of these events. Here we have 400 times 1, which will be 400 flips. We then have 200 times 2, so that will be 400 flips. Then we have 100 subjects who are flipping 3 times, which is 300 flips. We have 50 subjects that are flipping 4 times, which is 200. And finally, 25 subjects flip 5 times, which is a total of 125 flips. So let's calculate the total number of heads divided by the total number of flips. Each of the 800 subjects is ending in one head, and the total number of flips will be the sum of these totals, and this works out to be 1425. So the ratio of heads divided by total number of flips is 800 over 1425, which is 56.1%. So this is pretty close to 50%, and you can imagine in the limit this is going to go to 50%. So let me give an intuitive reason why the answer is 50%, and then I'll go over a rigorous proof. So imagine we have 800 subjects. What happens when everyone flips a coin? 400, which is half of the subjects, will flip a heads and stop. The other half will flip a tails and continue. Now after one flip, how many heads are there versus total flips? Well, half of the flips will be heads, so 50% are heads. Now, the 400 subjects that flipped a tails will have to flip again. So of these 400, half of them will flip a heads and stop, and the other half, which is 200, will flip a tails and continue flipping. So now consider the number of heads that are flipped in this round out of the total number of flips in this round. We obviously have 50% of the flips will be heads again. Now consider the 200 that need to continue flipping. Half of these will flip a heads, which is 100, and stop, and the other half will flip a tails and still have to continue flipping. In this third round of flips, once again, 50% of the flips will be a heads. So if you look that every round has 50% of the coins showing a heads, it is obvious that 50% of the coin flips, on average, will be a heads. And this is the reason that intuitively we can see 50% of the flips will be a heads. But now let's prove this rigorously. This is actually a fun little mathematical calculation. Imagine there are n subjects. Half of the subjects will flip a heads and stop. This will be 0.5n. The other half will flip a tails and continue flipping. Of these, half will flip a heads and stop. So it'll be 0.5n times 0.5, which works out to be 0.5 squared n. The other half will flip a tails and continue flipping. This will be 0.5 squared n. Of these subjects, half will flip a heads and stop. So we have 0.5 to the power of 3n. And the other half will flip a tails and continue flipping. Then half will flip a heads and then they will stop and the other half will flip a tails, and they will continue flipping. And we can imagine this continuing infinitely long. So we now need to calculate the number of heads divided by the total number of flips. The number of heads is easy to calculate. Each of n subjects will keep flipping until they flip one heads. So there will be n heads in total. All that remains is to calculate the total number of flips. This will be a weighted calculation. We know that half of the subjects will flip once. Then we know 0.5 squared n will flip twice. 0.5 cubed n will flip three times. 0.5 to the power of 4 n will flip four times, and so on. So we need this weighted average. So we need to calculate the number of flips, which will be equal to 1 times 0.5 n plus 2 times 0.5 squared n plus 3 times 0.5 cubed n, and so on. So let's focus on evaluating this sum. There's a neat little trick to evaluate this sum. We will take half of this sum, and we will shift the terms over. So 
So let's just shift the terms over by one. Let's subtract the bottom equation from the top equation. So f minus 0.5f will be 0.5f. We bring the first column down. Now in the second column, we're subtracting one from two, so we will end up with one. In the next column, we're subtracting two from three, so we end up with one, and so on. Every single column, we're going to end up with just one surviving term. So if we write this out, if we factor out an n from this, we end up with a geometric series, which is very common to evaluate. So the first term is 0.5, the common ratio is 0.5. So we have 0.5 divided by 1 minus 0.5, which will be equal to 1. Therefore, we have 0.5f is equal to n. Multiplying both sides of the equation by 2, we get that f is equal to 2n. And now we just complete the calculation. We need the number of heads divided by the number of flips. This is n divided by the number of flips. The number of flips is equal to 2n. n divided by 2n is exactly equal to 1 half or 50%. And that's why the answer is 50%. What an interesting puzzle. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.